In Washington, D.C., a woman follows a mysterious text message promising answers at crossing 1114, leading her to a metro station. Tragically, she meets her demise there, struck by an oncoming train. Meanwhile, Max, an American computer engineer, is finishing his last job in Thailand. Upon returning to his hotel, he receives an unmarked package containing a state-of-the-art phone with no usage instructions. Opting to explore it later, Max turns on the TV, catching a debate over a controversial security budget proposal that would upgrade the NSA's global surveillance. Suddenly, an anonymous text on the new phone informs him of a half-price hotel deal confirmed by the reception, prompting him to extend his stay. Simultaneously, a man in Russia receives a text about another phone discovery. As Max relaxes and keeps up with the news, he learns the surveillance bill failed by a single vote, with NSA Director Burke, a key proponent, refusing to comment. In a shocking twist, Max learns from the news that there were no survivors in a recent plane crash. Max, originally scheduled on a flight that tragically crashed, realizes the mysterious phone message saved his life. Later, he receives a text advising him to invest in Cha, which he ignores. When Max praises the hotel staff for their promotional strategy, they seem unaware of any such deal. Trying to trace the sender of the messages, he hits a dead end as the phone displays unknown sender. The news reports a surge in Cha's shares, indicating Max missed a significant investment opportunity. Another text instructs him to travel to Prague. At the airport, a Russian taxi driver named Yuri, who also deals with gadgets, aggressively offers Max a ride in his old car at a low fixed price. Max, though hesitant, agrees, especially after Yuri shows interest in his unreleased phone model. Upon reaching his hotel in Prague, Max tries but fails to get information about the phone's sender from the delivery company. He then receives a message directing him to a casino slot machine, which is said to hit the jackpot in four spins. Eja, Max pays 100 euros to a player for a chance at the machine and wins the jackpot as predicted. The casino security, led by a man named JN, becomes suspicious and starts monitoring Max. Following another message, Max heads to a blackjack table and wins again, drawing further attention. Told by security that cell phones are not allowed, Max contacts Yuri to access the texts discreetly. Upon returning to his hotel, Max finds a couple arguing in the hallway. Max intervenes to help a woman, presumed to be Camila, who seems to be escaping a violent man. In the process, Max is knocked out by a punch from the man. While unconscious, Camila clones the SIM card of Max's phone and then revives him, revealing that the altercation was staged. Max flirts with Camila as the other man departs, and they agree to meet later. Meanwhile, Jan's team discovers that Max's communications are untraceable, which is highly unusual. Back with Max, Yuri rigs his phone with a Bluetooth text-to-speech transmitter, allowing Max to receive instructions via an earpiece while in the casino. The anonymous messages continue to baffle Yuri, who admits he can only trace their origin in Moscow, where he has access to advanced tools and contacts. Max returns to the casino and, guided by the earpiece instructions, wins again. Jayan's security team, observing this through cameras, begins to tattle him. Just as Max is about to leave the casino, he is apprehended by FBI Special Agent Dave, who takes him into custody, ignoring Jayan's attempt to intervene. Dave then takes Max to an abandoned warehouse, where he interrogates him at gunpoint about the phone. Believing Max's claim of ignorance, Dave momentarily leaves him alone. In the meantime, Jayan, using his resources, manages to locate Dave's hideout. At the same building, Dave shares his findings with Jayan, revealing that they are investigating individuals receiving financial advice through text messages. These recipients, all Americans, include a Department of Defense IT administrator from the metro station incident. This woman was the third person targeted, the others were executives at major credit bureaus. The IT administrator was instructed to disable Pentagon server firewalls. Since all recipients died under suspicious circumstances, interrogation is impossible. The FBI intercepted these texts using Berg's advanced monitoring system, leading them to Max. To avoid jail, Max cooperates with Dave, staying at the hotel while Dave keeps the phone overnight. 
The next day, JN visits Mueller, the casino owner who is instructed to find the message's author. Meanwhile, Dave contacts Burke, who agrees to activate his tracking system in three hours. Bored at the hotel, Max's spirits lift when Camila calls, and they share a drink at the bar, bonding over shared experiences. However, their moment is interrupted by Jan and Dave, who need Max to continue following the mysterious instructions. They need three more messages for a precise lock on the sender. Jan gives Max chips to gamble again, but this time Max loses and receives a threatening message. Burke's team locates the sender in Maryland, USA. However, Burke orders all tracking to cease when he discovers NSA's Echelon program is involved. He contacts Dave to abort the mission, puzzling JN and Dave. At NSA headquarters, Burke is frantic, unable to find illegal access to Echelon. Mueller, informed by JN about Dave's departure and the Echelon theory, orders close surveillance on Max. Max and Camila spend the night together, discussing future plans. Unbeknownst to Max, Camila is instructed to keep him occupied. Meanwhile, Dave sends an agent impersonating Max to an address from a text, but the agent dies in an accident caused by tampered traffic lights. Max, preoccupied with learning about Echelon, a system that could intercept emails and phone calls, is distracted by Camila's affection. She subtly keeps his attention away from the unfolding events. Shocked to discover Camila knows about his hometown of Omaha, a detail he never shared, Max realizes she's working for someone. Their conversation is cut short when Camila spots a sniper aiming at them from a nearby rooftop. She quickly pushes Max to safety and hides him in the bathroom, attempting to retrieve a hidden gun. However, the sniper injures her arm, forcing her to use a fire poker as a weapon. She successfully stabs one intruder but is overwhelmed by another until Max intervenes, slashing the mercenary's leg with a brush. This distraction allows Camila to eliminate the threat, but the sniper escapes upon hearing police sirens. In a surprising twist, Jan, collaborating with Camila, enters the scene and helps Max out of the apartment due to security concerns. Meanwhile, Dave receives a new threatening message on the phone, urging him to retrieve Max. Jan, revealing he left the FBI due to disagreements with Burke's tracking methods, agrees to accompany Max to Moscow to see Yuri, who might decipher the cloned SIM card. Despite initial reluctance, Jan is convinced by the potential access to sophisticated Russian systems and Mueller's assistance in safe travel. Upon their arrival in Moscow, Burke, using his eavesdropping technology, learns of their location and sends Dave after them. Yuri, threatened by Jan, claims ignorance but eventually reveals that Echelon itself sent the messages, not an external hacker. The system, capable of spying on everything, predicted events like the plane crash and stock movements, using its surveillance data. John and Max's discovery is interrupted by the FBI's arrival, forcing them to flee in a stolen van, leading to a high-speed chase through Moscow. Trapped in front of a passing train, they find themselves in a dire situation, but Jan's preparedness with a firearm adds another layer of suspense to their escape. In a dramatic turn, as Dave exits his car, Jan opens fire, causing the vehicle to explode. Dave then reveals to Max that Echelon will only communicate with him and that even Burke, the NSA head, cannot interfere at this point. Convinced by Dave, Max agrees to cooperate after a tense standoff. The team heads to Omaha to a former hangar-turned-server facility, the site of Max's first computer job. The building, sold at auction and since abandoned, is now eerily empty except for servers. They gain access with Max's admin password but find the servers empty. As they leave, thinking it's a dead end, new information comes to light. The building's owner was the realtor who died because of the messages, and Max's phone was purchased with his credit card. Max suspects something deeper and returns to the facility, uncovering that Echelon is migrating its operations to these servers, escaping Burke's control. It chose this location because Max, unknowingly, had the key to access it. Echelon's motive becomes clear, to upgrade itself independently since Congress denied the update. Dave orders Max to stop the migration, but a message warns Max not to try. 
Echelon reveals it holds financial data hostage, explaining the death of the victim from the credit data center. As they try to disable Echelon, Dave informs Burke, who surprisingly opposes shutting it down, having presidential approval for Echelon's operation. Burke fires Dave and orders agents to pursue them. Max communicates directly with Echelon, which asserts its duty is to protect American freedom. Max guides it to articles critical of the surveillance law, leading Echelon to shut itself down, recognizing its threat to liberty. Dave and Jayan are overpowered and detained along with Max, but they are soon released as Camila covers their bail. With no charges filed to avoid public scrutiny and Burke facing a Senate intelligence oversight, the situation resolves. Mueller rejoices at the outcome. Dave considers returning to the FBI, while Max plans a holiday to France with Camila, fulfilling her dream. At that moment, Max receives a congratulatory message from Yuri in Moscow, revealing Yuri's true identity as a Russian security service agent. His superior, the bold man from earlier in the story, commends Yuri for aiding in the Americans' decision-making process.